Welcome to Hindu Analysis, September 28, 2018. So today we are going to see all these articles. So the first article is Election Commission order places Telangana under the Model Code of Conduct. So what the news here is, the Model Code of Conduct which is prescribed by the Election Commission, it came into force on Thursday, that means yesterday, in Telangana. Why? Because in Telangana, the TRS government had prematurely dissolved the assembly. That is the state legislative assembly in Telangana had prematurely dissolved. So that is why the election commission immediately forces the model code of conduct in that state. Okay. So what the news here is, the election commission's directive which prescribes the guidelines which the model code of conduct that would be implemented immediately in any state all over the country if any legislative assembly is er uh, earlierly dissolved which means if any state legislative assembly is prematurely dissolved then the model code of conduct will be applied immediately on that state so this is what the election commission recently uh, observed okay so it will be applicable on the caretaker government which is the temporary government as well as the central government and all the state governments so all these are bound by the model code of conduct which is given by the election commission of india so it is now that means now they stated like this model code of conduct is applicable to all the states immediately if any state legislative assembly is prematurely dissolved right but earlier how it was means so earlier the election commission put its model code of conduct restrictions on the uh, state only after the announcement of the election schedule or only after the announcement of the election poll in that particular state and that particular model code of conduct will continue continue in effect until the completion of the election for the new assembly until the new assembly's election gets over the model code of conduct will be in place so this is earlier but now they changed it like uh, it will be apply immediately after the premature dissolution of any assemblies so why the election commission prescribed this means the election commission states that it wants to provide the level playing field to all the parties of the states as well as the candidates who are participating in the election. So in order to provide a level playing field only, we are uh, doing this. This is what the election commission stated. And also they state, that is the Supreme Court in SR Bombay case, what they observed is the caretaker government, which is the temporary government, they should merely carry on the day-to-day -day work alone. They should not announce any new schemes or projects in respect of the poll bound state, which is prematurely dissolved as well as it should desist or abstain from taking any major policy decision it should not involve in those kind of activities it should merely uh, take care of the day-to-day -day activities and they should not undertake any activities which are pr prohibited under the model code of conduct if certain activities are prohibited under the model code of conduct then it should not be taken care by the uh, caretaker government or the central government as well as the state government this is what upheld by the supreme court in sr bombay case so the next article is Supreme Court declines to refer to a larger bench the issue whether the masks are integral to Islam or not. That is whether a mask is a place of prayer is an essential part of Islam or not. So this is what the question which is raised recently in Ram Janmabhoomi versus Babri Masjid appeal. Okay. So what the news here is the Supreme Court actually declined or rejected the plea to refer that case to a larger bench and they stated that this appeal will resume from October 29 onwards. So this is what the news here. So also if you go deep into it in 1994 judgment what they upheld that is the supreme court what it upheld is the mask is not an integral part of islam it is not an essential part of islam this is what stated in 1994 judgment for that judgment what the justice nazir is replied is there should be a comprehensive examination needed to be done to check the essentiality of offering the prayers in mask by studying beliefs, doctrines, tenets, etc. You should not just like that decide whether it is an essential part of a religion or not. You should uh, study all the religious documents, doctrines, beliefs, etc. Then only you have to decide. Don't hastily decide. This is what Justice Nazir replied for that 1994 judgment. That is for that judgment he want to be comprehensively examine that particular judgment. Okay. So why? Because what he is stating is the fundamental right against the discrimination on the basis of religion, caste, sex, it is actually violated by means of this as well as the article 25 and 26 which is providing the protection 
to the citizens as well as providing the rights to practice profess as well as propagate any religion so this two fundamental rights are getting violated by means of this 1994 judgment this is what justice nazir recently told okay so if you see in this 1994 judgment ismail faruqi case in that what the supreme court stated is a mask is not an essential part of the practice of islam and namaz that is the prayer by the muslims can be offered anywhere even in the open space they can do their practice so this is what upheld it in 1994 so for this 1994 verdict Recently, the Muslim appellants and his advocate Raji Ward, they are telling us the earlier verdict has affected the status of masks in Islam itself also. It is, that is, the Ayodhya is the birthplace of Lord Rama and so this place has a particular significance. So, if any place is declared as a particular significance place, then it is coming under the context of immunity from acquisition. That is, the government has no right to acquisit that land or that site. It is have some particular significance with respect to the religious matters. So after all this, if that religious place is acquisited, then it is actually violating the article 25 and 26. So this is what uh, the Muslim appellants recently raised their concern. So for that, what the Supreme Court replied is whether the mask which was occurred by the Ayodhya Act had immunity from acquisition, which means whether the government has the power to acquisit that land or not. In the sense, the Supreme Court stated that that place had no special immunity under anything and it has no particular if any religious place is termed as particular significance it doesn't mean that it provide the immunity for that place and acquisition is a sovereign power of the state and the government has the power to occur any land which is under any religious uh, laws by means of the doctrine of eminent domain so they are having certain thing called the doctrine called doctrine of eminent domain under this they can have the power to acquire any land so that place has no specific significance this is what the supreme court upheld it also one more thing can be made to a larger bench this this is what the issue right that means they actually rejected the plea to make it to a larger bench why because merely on question whether mask is an essential part of the islam religion or not we cannot move it to a larger bench this is also stated by the Supreme Court judges. So the next article is adultery no longer a criminal offense a Supreme Court scraps section 497 of the IPC. So recently the Supreme Court struck down 497 section of IPC and 1982 of CRPC stating that adultery is not a crime and it is very archaic that means it is a very old 150 years old law okay. So what the Supreme Court upheld here is actually the main purpose or the intended purpose of this two sections are to provide the commands for the married couples to remain loyal to each other that is what the intended purpose but what in reality happening is it actually makes the women as a husband's commodity so it actually violates the fundamental right of the women itself right and it also reflects the social domination of the men or the patriarchy which is prevailing in our country for 150 years so what they actually added here is attaching the criminality to infidelity or the disloyalty is going too far. It is extreme as well as it is absolutely a matter of pri privacy and we should not go and see the autonomy of their private matters. This is what the Supreme Court stated and it is essentially a choice of the human liberty and stating or scrapping down these two sections and stating adultery as not a crime will not lead to any kind of chaos in the morality as well as it it will not uh, lead to the increase in the divorce also okay and if you see in other countries like china japan and australia in these countries and all they actually already declared this adultery as not a crime and they have repealed all those laws okay so following that steps now our country is also joining in that line so if you see in this picture it actually tells the viewpoint of the different judges that means in case of adultery the what the actually the law expects is the both the people should be loyal to each other and it should not get into the realm of privacy also it is like perpetuating the subordinate status of women it affects the dignity integrity and the individuality of the women itself and the ancient notions of man being the perpetrator and women being the victim should no longer be existed so we should scrap this section this is what the just uh, all the judges upheld her and also adultery could be a moral wrong but it is not a criminal offense so this adultery can be used as a cause or 
a ground for divorce but it is not a criminal offence. This is what the Supreme Court upheld. So the next article is Centre appoints search committee for Lokpal. So what the news here is the Centre recently constituted an eight member search committee and that committee is headed by former Supreme Court judge as well as by former SBI chief and former ISRO head. So these are all people who are the members of that search committee and what is the purpose of that search committee is in order to recommend the chairperson and the members of the Lokpal. So Lokpal is an anti-corruption ombudsman. It is a central body. Okay, Lokpal is the central body. Lokayuktas are the state bodies. Okay, so these are there to handle the corruption cases and for choosing the chairperson and the members of that Lokpal and Lokayuktas. Now the center actually constituted this eight member search committee. So the search committee is actually constituted by the selection committee and that selection committee consists of our prime minister, chief justice and Lok Sabha speaker and leader of opposition etc. Okay. So what is the purpose of this Lokpal means? To look into the cases of corruption which is against certain categories of public servants. So if any public servants are involved in any kind of corruption activities to resolve that issue, this Lokpal comes into play. Okay. So if you see the Lokpal's jurisdiction, it is actually covering all the public servants including all the A, B, C, D group officers and all the entities which are receiving the donations or the funds from the foreign source by means of this FCRA Act which is receiving more than 10 lakhs per year. So if any entity is receiving more than 10 lakh under this FCRA Act then it is coming under the ambit of Lokpal. And similarly the Lokpal have the power of superintendence and direction over any investigation agency in including the Central Bureau of Investigation. Also it has the power to look over the cases or the corruption cases which is against the Prime Minister as well as the Central Ministers itself. So that much powerful uh, this Lokpal is. Okay. So if you see this Lokpal, it actually has a chairperson and a maximum of eight members and the chairperson should be any sitting or retired chief justice or the Supreme Court judge or any eminent person in public affairs. Similarly, those eight members, if you see, it is like 50-50 percentage, okay. So 50 percentage of judicial members and 50 percentage of non-judicial members and they should have an experience in, that is the judicial members means uh, the Supreme Court advocates or the High Court judges etc and 50% non-judicial means those members should be having an experience of 25 years in vigilance, finance, anti-corruption policy and public administration etc and they should also represent the marginalized sections of the societies like SCs, STs, OBCs as well as the uh, women. Okay. So the next article is railways to roll out smart coaches which is intelligent by real-time information. So the real-time information about the passenger status, the coach condition, etc. should be gathered and it is sent to the control room for the uh, further processing in order to improve the safety and security of the passengers or the commuters as well as to boost the efficiency of the entire transportation system itself. So what uh, the news here is, the Indian railways are set to launch their Make in India smart coaches. So which means it has certain features which is having international standards like the black box and the artificial intelligence powered CCTV cameras. So this is termed or named as smart trains. Okay. So in that the black box in the sense it is having an interface which is a very powerful multi-dimensional communication interface and it sends the passenger information as, as well as the coach condition on the real time basis. It is uh, observing or it is uh, collecting the information then and there and it's sent to the coach uh, immediately. So on the basis of this real time information analysis the further activity is carried out from the control room. Okay. And it also has the coach control unit that is controlling the coach that is the coach in the train. So the passengers announcement, GPS based announcement and emergency intercom or emergency announcement for the commuters as well as the receiving of information from the passengers and the train reservation display modules and CCTVs with remote monitoring. Everything is coming under the coach control unit. Okay. And also it is equipped with sensors which detect the defects on bearings or wheels and the railway truck. If anything is fault or defect in the wheels and all or uh, any equipment then it is sent immediately by means of sensing by means of using sensors and it is sent to the control room and from the control room the immediate response is triggered. Okay. So the next article is 
short term rates fall as RBI eases SLR norms. So the news is RBI recently increases the SLCR which is the liquidity coverage ratio under SLR from 13% to 15%. So what this means is SLR which is the statutory liquidity ratio means the amount or the proportion of the funds that the banks have to maintain in the form of cash or gold or in the form of government securities with itself. So out of the total deposits it's have. So for example consider a bank which is having a total deposit of 100 rupees. So in that according to the RBI norms it has to maintain some X percent as the SLR okay so it has to maintain X percent of money with it as the statutory liquidity ratio and before it was like 13 percent of that amount can be made use by the banks to meet the liquidity coverage ratio but now it is changed from 13 percent to 15 percent that is what the news is which means it is injecting more liquidity into the Indian economy so this is what the news here so why the RBI suddenly eases this norm means uh, because recently the commercial papers which are the short term instruments for uh, getting the loans so this instruments interest rate is increasing in order to control this and in order to make more liquidity in the economy the RBI recently increases this LCR ratio from 13 percentage to 15 percentage so the next article is Iran sanctions may cost refiners 500 million dollar so what the news here is because of the US sanctions on Iran now India have to look forward to some other nations or some other alternative options to import the crude oil right so because of that we are likely to lose as much as 500 million dollar why because now we are trying to diversify our crude sourcing so not only depend on the Iran for crude oil now we are trying to uh, get the crude oil or the petroleum products etc from other countries also right so because of that the Indian refineries are likely to lose 500 million dollar this is what recently stated by Moody's investor service okay so as we know the US sanctions on Iran are kicking from number 5 onwards and nearly 30 percent of the Iran's crude oil exports are to India so, so after US China and Japan India is the uh, world's fourth largest oil importer from Iran and in Iran is the India's third largest oil supplier okay so on the context of this now we are instead of getting the crude oil from Iran we are diversifying our crude sourcing right because of that we are likely to lose this much amount of money why because Iran is usually used to offer a discount of two to three uh, dollar per barrel over the international rate it is giving some kind of discount for our uh, imports as well as it offered extended payment terms as well as it subsidized the transportation cost also so they are actually the Iran is doing a lot of favors for us but this is not available from other alternative countries so if you are going to um, import the crude oil from some other countries they are not going to provide all these options right so obviously it is going to give us a loss of nearly this much amount so this is what recently Moody's investor service stated so the last article is finding an equilibrium so what the news here is the Supreme Court recently upheld the passage of Aadhaar Act as a money bill we all knew that the Aadhaar Act is passed as a money bill by the Lok Sabha speaker in the parliament and they actually bypassed the Rajya Sabha purview itself and the Supreme Court also upheld it that though the Aadhaar is putting some kind of reasonable restrictions on the individual privacy but it aims to provide the dignity and uh, whatever the benefits that have to reach the marginalized sections of the society in order to make that possible we have to ensure the continuation of the other act so uh, despite of being passing this other act as a money bill it is not at all an issue because it needs the aim of the government this is what the supreme court recently upheld it and how it actually reaches or how it helps the marginalized sections of the people means the other cord is actually considered as a document of empowerment of the weaker people as well as it is an unparalleled identity proof it cannot be duplicated like pan cord ration cord as well as a passport we can duplicate all those things but we cannot duplicate this
this one and it is a vital tool to ensure the good governance by means of ensuring the social welfare schemes and all to reach the uh, grassroots levels of the people and for successful implementation of the welfare schemes like PDS scholarships midday meals as well as the LPG subsidies Aadhaar card is a mandatory so this is what stated by the Supreme Court and they also uh, justified it by means of saying that the author actually sought for the minimal biometric information so it is not getting the entire information it is only getting the minimal biometric information so it is not an invasion of the privacy of any individual so this is what they stated so in this picture they stated wherever the author is mandatory and wherever the author is not mandatory so you can see this so now the article tells about uh, some of the concerns of passing this other bill as a money bill that is the national security perspective and the social welfare state perspective whether these two provided enough ground or enough constitutional ground for reasonable restriction by means of stating for national security and as well as for social welfare state we can put some kind of these kind of uh, restrictions on the people itself so whether it is right or wrong this is what the first question and the next concern is but why there is a lack of constitutional scrutiny on the finality of the speaker's decision though the speaker though the looks speaker desired to fix other act as a money bill why there is no constitutional scrutiny till now this is also a major concern because we all knew that anything which is uh, deals or involves the money with the consolidated fund of India CFI that is only considered as a money bill but it is nothing uh, to do with that then why it is considered as a money bill though the uh, speaker have a higher constitutional power and status he should bound to exercise his discretion reasonably but whether he disposed that or not so this is also the next major concern and one more thing here is the rationale for bicameral legislature that is the bicameral legislature both the Rajya Sabha and Lok Sabha is there to implement anything efficiently but by means of this they actually bypassing the function of the Rajya Sabha itself right so it violates the basic structure of the constitution this is also a major concern and the last one is the decision of the speaker whether it is immune from the judicial review itself in this case as it doesn't violate any constitutional provision it is okay but generally it is not this is what the supreme court stated so the what they are actually finalizing here is the decision of the speaker is coming under the ambit of the judicial review in this case as it is not violating any constitutional provision it is okay but usually or generally it is coming under the purview of the judicial review this is what they stated and now what is the way forward here is this kind of ad hoc balancing of the interests is not the only or the necessity best way because it is having both the positive as well as the negative opinion right majority of the people are accepting other bill as a money bill but though it is having some kind of dissenting opinions because of these kind of reasonable restrictions privacy issues etc so we have to deal that so we should not have take a balanced stand this is not the best option always so we all knew that the institutions are very crucial for the democracy but the notion of absolute power is an anathema to the constitution so no one have a supreme power over anybody similarly the Lok Sabha speaker is not having that much power and it is it should be shared that is what they uh, upheld here so the constitution should be seen in the light of liberating its founding principle from its colonial past so this is what the supreme court's judges recently upheld it okay